Just for comparison, this is the old Q7. This is the old Q7. You got those really big Q7 lights and everything. This is a uh, nice car, nice, nice. But uh, the interior shows the old design language. As you can see, it's not as luxurious. It's not as lavish on the sides and everything. You know, everything's much, much simpler. Everything's much, much simpler in here. The little little itty bitty nav screen. You got a dial gauge cluster right here that is not so lavish, not so luxurious. And uh, everything's just really, really simple. It's really, really, really simple. It doesn't, doesn't scream at you. It doesn't really scream at you, does it? So now I'm gonna take a look at the new Q7 to see if that would be a nice option. This one doesn't really scream at you. It doesn't really scream luxury. Somebody who watches my videos asked me to take a look at the Q7 since they know I'm a fair and unbiased person just like Fox News. So this is the new Q7. Now this thing has been on the market for a couple of weeks, months. Yep, that's a Q7. Okay, so very big wheels, very big brakes. It's about the same, it looks like the same size as a GLS. This thing's been on the market so long until pretty much anybody who was interested has already checked it out. I'm going to sit in the back and see what that feels like, see how much headroom's in the sun. It's got a very big panel roof. That's always nice. Okay. This bolts. Okay, that's nice, that's nice. All right. Heated seats in the back. Plus or minus uh, cooling for the uh, fan in this uh, rear zone. I don't even know why I'm bothering to do this because the problem is it's not new. There's all there's probably already about a hundred thousand reviews about this thing. It doesn't. It's so generic. I mean, yeah, it says Audi on it, but well, what's this? You can get a 21-inch wheel upgrade. If you want a 21 inch wheel upgrade, you can get that. That's cool. Interior space in the Q7 is pretty good. It's really good all the way around. Like I was sitting in the back and um, in the back I can sit straight up because this is a very high ceiling. And I also had plenty of leg room so long as that chair was kept that way. So, um, very good looking interior. Power trunk. So this is uh, definitely a nice vehicle. It's being sold a little bit less than the cost of my Jeep SLT, but um, it's got power, power clothes uh, seats, power folds. Okay. The seats do recline. And they also go forward naturally. See, they have all this technology and everything hidden. You got flashing lights on everything. Yeah, so that's this is the inside of the Q7. So if I recline the back a little, I can recline back and I can sit perfectly with my head like this. So this is definitely a SUV I could consider if I was going to replace that Jeep. But the thing about it is that Jeep is all about other things. It's all about being a sport truck. It's not about being a luxury truck. This is a luxury truck. See that? So the reclining system is pretty nice. Now, if you fold it forward, I think you can also pull this up because you, you see those buttons there flashing all these uh, power folds and this, that, and all that. But um, there's a third row in this, which is one reason why a lot of people would definitely consider it. Can, you know, that's one of the reasons why the Durango sells over the Jeep SRT. It's because of that third row. A lot of these SUVs don't have third rows anymore. And there's a lot of families that have approached a size where they actually need a third row. They have the same monostatic shifter. 
that uh, people attack Chrysler over, but they don't attack Audi over. But this one has a park button, and it also has another button on the side, as you can see. So this one, by simply, Anton Yelchin would still be alive if there was just a simple park button where you could just push park and boom, you parked. This has USB ports and auxiliary ports. Okay. Love compartment has SIM cards for the 4G system, SD card one and SD card two. So this thing is a multimedia monster. It's got a lot of stuff in it for multimedia. That's pretty good. I'm about to drive one of them. I have to admit, I'm not as excited about this as I would be over the Trackhawk, but you know, nothing's perfect. Yeah. Oh, it sings to you. Well, if you want to see the trunk, please. Oh, I looked at the other one. It was. Uh, With the seats down as well? Oh, this one's. Okay, this one's brown. Let me see. The privacy curtain is actually off this one. So oh. the adequate space in which you have. Okay, and these, uh. These, oh, okay, so that's for, is this only the third row? Is that the second row, too? Oh, no, only the third row. Only the third row. Yeah, okay. and you can control it from either left, right, or the rear. Uh, let me show you the subwoofer in here as well. Oh, this is the subwoofer. Yeah, it's a little cool stand feature, and it sounds great, so. Yeah, oh, okay. Well, all right, all right. You have all your tools, your well, jacks, that's, uh, air pump. That's uh, for the compressor. Okay. So pretty much, you know, you got a nice little setup here. That looks good. Yeah. All right, give me one second, all right? Okay. Once again, get comfortable, get familiar. Right okay. So, uh... Okay. Yeah. All right, so let's see what we got. Everybody's buying SUVs now. Okay, so I got the power powered everything. All right, so how does it uh, sound when you rever? All right, let's go. Oh man, that ain't scaring nobody. I want this thing to scare people when I rev it. It goes. <laughs> Okay. Alright, they got the lights inside the dials. That looks good. Lights inside the dials so I can turn it nice and low. Low. This is a nice interior. It's really, really nice. See, my thing is, I gotta look at the GLS and see what Mercedes is doing to get the proper comparison. And this is the, uh, screen which you can put up and down you know Audi's always done that and then you had Pioneer follow them or whatever and uh, everybody pretty much wanted to have this system look just like that and this is the obviously the uh, writing pad so pretty much everything in here is like pretty much straightforward this is exactly what you expect out of Audi Oh, oh, how about the shade? How about that shade? Where's the shade at? How do you put the shade? Oh, okay, wait, wait. That's the window. That's the shade. Let's go, shade. Come on, shade. Let's go. Come on, shade. Okay, you, you might... Oh, you don't have to do it in two stages. It'll do it in one. Okay, and that's the back seat. And this is a Q7. And you see, the thing about it is, as awesome as these German cars are and how they make the interiors look like airplanes and everything, it's like they got some really good selling points, especially if you're a family, because um, somebody in my family actually bought a Q5. They have great selling points for a family luxury car. Very, very good selling points. Very, very good selling points. The only problem is what they don't have is a 6.2 liter supercharged Hemi. So that kind of creates an issue for me. Right there, you have the map directly in front of you. Okay. Just as you have it here, you okay. can have uh, your phone, your radio stations. Okay. You know, info on the car itself. Okay, yeah, that's yeah. nice. 
automatic connection. It's because I, I've, I've noticed in there that they have like a, what is it called, a SIM card thing. So you can, what is that for? That's for a hotspot, Wi-Fi hotspot? Yes. Oh, but okay. honestly, you don't even really need it. Right. You can access it without that in this car. Okay. And what else did this one have? Okay, I saw this one. Heated steering wheel. What is the cooled seat? Well, oh, this, this one, doesn't, yeah, this doesn't this have one. the option. Oh. Mm. Um, four, four, five, stage three, you could put. All right, try that. Just hearing you know, the fingerprint? Yeah, oh, yeah, just type, spell it out. Okay, there you go, five. Okay, and space okay. to just swipe across just to swipe the right. Across there space. you go. Oh, okay. Uh, let's see. Let's see. S T. Oh, okay. It automatically. Yeah. When it sees it, what do you do? Well, you just scroll down. Okay. Through the list. Why and you? All right. Push down. Okay. And to cancel it. To cancel it. To cancel. It. To cancel it. Like, go right push? into maps. Go to cancel root guidance. Okay. All right. I'll show you a beautiful thing as well. I see you got your phone. Um, yeah. Apple Connect. Actually, plug your seat there. Initial thoughts as far as the acceleration. It's pretty good. Pretty good. It's pretty good. It can merge. It looks like it could probably merge pretty easily. Yeah. You're gonna make a right hit. Okay, right after this one. Yep. Notice the, the blind spot monitors illuminating. I see it, and it's yeah. a big yellow light right there. That's correct. Is that the only feature that's in that light? Yeah, I mean, well, once again, if you try to merge, you put on your turn signal, you'll see it blinking, indicating that it's not safe to merge lanes. Gotcha. And I, I know those mirrors are heated. I'm sure that. Yes. Yeah. Heated windshield? No. No heated windshield. But then again, you do have the defroster, so technically. So you know, you know they so put heated windshields on the things. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Volvo said that they had that on, I think it's the XC90, where, where like they actually have wires and stuff mm -hmm. that'll heat the windshield. I thought that was pretty good. So what do you think of the seat, the comfort of the, the ride so far? It's How really do you feel soft. about seats, man? I'll tell you like this. The only thing that kind of bothers me, the steering wheel doesn't raise up a little bit higher because my steering wheel is probably just a little bit further back. It's a little bit further back and it goes a little bit higher. But other than that, it's, uh, it's very comfortable. It's very good. And visibility. It's easy to see out. Put in park, I just push park. Just push park. Now to go to reverse, push and hold. Oh, no, no, you gotta push forward. Oh, there that's a new one. But check out all the cameras you have on this. You have the bird's eye view. That's your front camera right there. Corner rod, rear, corner rear. Check it out though, okay. Yeah. Does it auto stop if you're about to hit your, your kids or something? <laughs> no, it does not. No auto stop? No. The, the, the Volvo does that. Yeah. Like if you're about to run over a kid, it'll it'll stop itself yeah. if you are about to run the kid over. I've also seen a video of the Volvo actually running people over as well, so. I, I, Mercedes, <laughs> I saw a video of Distronic doing that. Like, yeah, um, you know. he, he, he set it and then crashed right into a car. Yeah. Okay. Don't get me wrong, these autonomous features are great. You can't trust them, but, you, but you know, you that's know, the, it, it takes time. It, it takes does. time. It, it really does. takes time it to does. fix it all. All right, this guy is next to me, so I don't, you know, I'll give him just enough space because I don't know if he's opening this door. Right. Don't worry, you're, you're good. Okay. Check the road ahead. Go a little further back. Uh, huh? Yeah, go a little further back.
A little close up of the features on here. You have the uh, auto fold mirror, switch, and everything. Child locks for the back to make sure your kids don't get in and out of the car without your permission or when you're in traffic. So, uh, yeah, it's overall, this is really, really nice. It's exactly what you've come to expect from German automobiles. And this represents the best thing that they've got with a third row seat. It represents the absolute best. And this is 21 miles to the gallon, but if you're on the highway and you take it easy on the pedal, you can see somewhere up to 26. If you're lucky and you're on flat road, you don't have to struggle too hard. But they, they've done a really good job making this. Me personally, I'm still disappointed that they, you know, this, I, I keep saying the same thing. It's like, why don't they have auto features and power features and everything? Like a luxury car, it's like these guys, I don't know why. There's certain things that I just don't understand why the luxury car companies can't get straight. Like the moonroof, the panoramic moonroof is actually standard, but the uh, navigation system's not standard. Does that make sense? I don't know. Heated and cooled seats are not standard. As you can see, these seats are heated, even in an $80,000 or $70,000 truck. You know, even in a $70,000 truck, you get a heated seat right here, but no cooled seat. Yeah, so it's like, you know, there's certain, there's a couple of features I would have really liked to have seen as a standard in this car, but uh, it's beautiful. This thing is really, really nice. Yeah. I guess a powered lumbar button must have gone here, but this one didn't have that feature. And you get these nice weather textile Q7 floor mats cut perfectly to fit, and it's nice and rubber. So, um, yeah, they've done a really damn good job building this thing. This is very, very, very luxurious.